Namaskara and very good morning. I think Yamini is smiling at me because I think when she first started this project, she just took the phone and called me. And I think you've come a long way and congratulations for all this and your team. For me, yes, please. Uh, for me, uh, the most challenging part is I don't know anybody on stage and I'm meeting them on the first time. So it's as challenging as putting art in the airport. Uh, for me, the airport has been a space for transit. It is not a museum, very importantly. Neither it is an art gallery. But this effort to bring art into a place, which is a place of a lot of tension. You want to get to where you want to go. But you do have a lot of time. And some wise people don't rush to the airport. They go in very early and kind of pause. And this is the time I think is most precious when you pause, when you want to read a book or you want to catch up with somebody. And this time for pause is a time when we need to make people look at these artworks. I'll tell you, it is very, very challenging. I think I spoke to Anupama Hoskere, who was uh, here, I don't... And she was telling me that she kept looking at uh, people who are looking at uh, her puppets and she feels that some of them don't even, uh, are not even curious. But, uh, but some of them are, want to know what it is made up of or what the context is. But uh, so there is an opportunity here for the Rasika, who is here a traveler, to somehow get into the conceptual idea of this Navarasa, whatever Rasa he wants to take from this pausing time at the airport and try to get into this work of art or try to be curious or a small child might ask a curious question and who knows that small child would become an artist. So this could be a space for encountering art and I feel it's a great opportunity and uh, uh, an incident happened yesterday where I met uh, Mr. Devraj who is the um, curator of the archaeological museum and for the first time I saw a Chola bronze. It is the most stunning bronze which I have put on Instagram. I know all these people from Vasudev to Talur to Shantamani and Ravi uh, and others are my contemporaries and friends. I know all their works are extremely uh, fascinating but this Chola bronze stunned me. The 11th century Chola bronze. The pedestal is broken and uh, obviously you know that it's done by the lost pra wa wa wax process and you look at it and you realize that here is a bronze possibly in the archaeology department by default it might be stolen might be caught at the airport or at mean being shipped away somewhere else to be in another museum but today it's got a new lease of life and thanks to BIAL that it is there as part of many other exhibits and I think this is going to make maybe a small dent in people's mind that they would appreciate a little bit of beauty. And if you don't look at a Chola bronze, Chandrasekhar, Shiva or a Nataraja or a, the Devi sculpture, etc., uh, you might even look at the contemporary art and ask, ask, ask questions because most of the people who have this thing saying that we don't understand modern art. I think here is an opportunity and, uh, and maybe they could make a little more effort and possibly BIL could create some kind of a QR code which they could click it and they click something and get an art appreciation course, possible. And maybe we could see some change. And just to make people stop, pause and look is the most difficult task. And I think we need to do this in many more places. So uh, I'm going to uh, move into my topic of uh, materials. As you know, one of the most challenging things of pu public uh, sculpture or public art is material. And I think the brief given to you is obviously that permanent material chahiye, right? But uh, it is a challenge because uh, as the leather puppeteer said, uh, I think we have a large collection of leather puppets in Chitrakala Parishat. They're going to sink it into the water. Everything is not permanent. And these materials need not last also. 
I know BAL won't do that. They'll try to preserve it as much as possible. But there have been situations where I think there's a lot of material that is extremely challenging that you have used in your work. So I'm going to ask each one of you to introduce yourselves very, very shortly and tell me what kind of material that you've used in your artwork. Please. Siddharth. Okay. Hi. Hello. Mic on. Okay, uh, so my pieces are uh, based on uh, Mysore Maharaja's board games and they are all floor inlay designs. So I had to take the toughest material, I didn't have any choice. But of course through that also I've worked with uh, marble and uh, black stone and previously I had tried with granite, of course we, we didn't work also with epoxy. But these are all based on the interpretations of the Maharaja's interpretations of the original board games. And the pity is that nobody has documentations or there are like nearly zero documentation of all these games. So I had to do research and reinterpret what the games would have been and why the Maharaja would have interpreted those games in that way. So that is my con concept was reinterpreting the interpretations. Is there an opportunity for somebody to play this game or figure out how uh, this could well, be. Uh, if you know the traditional board games, then I guess, yeah. Like the Night Store is a game where the horse piece, or the main piece, is only able to walk two and a half paces in a regular chessboard. But what the Maharaja did was devised the whole play where the horse piece covered actually each and every block on the chessboard. You know, and it's a completely mathematical genius that he was. So he. Most of the games that he did was based on mathematics and also having some moral stories behind them to it's like to carry forward the culture and the traditions of the region. Thank you. Thank Next. you. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, so my work was uh, generally my practice is about perception and this work called Khora. Uh, Khora is a Greek word uh, which means uh, neither this place nor that place. It's neither this nor that. So it's not particular, it's not uh, universal, uh, but it's singular itself. And uh, it's kind of, you know, it's a, uh, it's, it's a transitory kind of a space. So in context of uh, airport and how the memories we carry from, you know, uh, from one point to other point and it's, it's mix of emotions and it's very fluid kind of, there is no form to it. And uh, that's how the uh, work is here. And it's with, the, uh, with a very basic form it's it's sphere and it's a sphere is made of a two hemisphere but there are two hemisphere and it's still not uh, we can call it as a sphere so uh, it it's more of uh, working with uh, this you know like uh, the flux you know how the form form is changing when you move from one point to another point and uh, yeah and and about uh, material, it's it's brick. Uh, it's a tiny uh, miniature size brick. It's a terracotta, and uh, it's it's a cladding process. Uh, that's because you know it it has to be hollow. It has to be light in weight because it's a construction kind of a uh, material. So to make it light, it, it's it's a cladding uh, process. So thank you. Yeah. Alex. Incidentally, I've seen Alex's work and I, uh, I've often admired it. And uh, now I've seen him live and I bump him to him in the airport for the first time and we kind of recognize each other. So, thanks, Suresh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, I have to, you know, just talk about the image that I have because it's still a work in progress. So, the materiality, the materials I've used is like a bronze finish uh, steel, stainless steel and uh, script. So that's what I'm going to compose the whole thing. Does the this script is, say something? Uh, it does. It's a Navrasas. Okay. It's like a chant that's going on that's under the canopy of the leaf. More like the money stones that you find 
the Buddhist money stones or the prayer mm. flags in the mountains. So that was the idea. When I started work, it was on a much larger scale. I conceived it as a larger scale work. And the idea was for people to sit around or sit under the, under the canopy of this, you know. And what is the scale of the work? Uh, it was fairly large initially, but now it's scaled down to the, you know, kind of an interior space kind of scale. As you, uh, some of you already know that uh, the, the airport has very enthusiastically brought in the garden as a theme into the, uh, into the airport. And I think uh, it uh, makes it one of the most unique features in, in many other airports that I have seen. Yeah, also this particular one, this is, for me, Bangalore is re just represented by one tree, the rain tree. So it's the architecture of the rain tree. And it's from one of the streets that, you know, I could kind of more or less get close to it. Uh, just as an anecdote, can you tell us why uh, and where did you study in Karnataka? Oh, yeah, yeah. I did my engineering in uh, Chikmagalore. Okay. And before I started on my journey elsewhere, all over the place. But my starting point has been Chikmagalore. I very much loved it. Used to, you know, keep escaping to Bangalore. <laughs> spend a lot of time by the streets and such. Yeah. Perhaps that came from there. The memory of those grand old rain trees lining up the streets. Uh, just a, uh, another story, somebody told me that Bangalore has the largest rain trees uh, because and most of them were planted in the cantonment area to camouflage spaces that cannot be seen from the air. So it was another way of trying to camouflage uh, um, army spaces which were there. And the rain tree has become part of our lives now. Next. Hi, my name is Siddharth and uh, the installation is inspired from Indian Thali, the way uh, different uh, flavors or tastes or the emotions are combined in, a, in, in a different Thalis uh, all over the uh, Asian subcontinent and, and this, this, uh, th that was the base uh, behind this installation. Uh, I have taken uh, different spices, fruits, uh, vegetables uh, as, as different layers of, of the glasses and uh, the Thali, where you see all these flavors or the taste combines uh, with each other, that's, that's how I see even the emotions or rasas are, are not uh, individual. They, they merge with each other, they create their own uh, cosmos or the era or the space and, and that's what I wanted to create and uh, uh, as far as the materials are concerned, I've used two uh, uh, different things. One is the analog way of printing photographs, that's the cyanotype as, as the base process, which then digitally translated into a glass, a series of layers of glass, which can be viewed differently from each side and creates a, a world of its own. So that's being the base for this installation. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Mayadhar Sahu. So basically, my uh, material is on the subject. Ka upar depend karta hai. So what kind of subject I choose? Because uh, I uh, did uh, also uh, marble, iron, lots of material I can use. And uh, this culture, I think uh, we are uh, making uh, wood. But we were MDF to do this because uh, MDF is uh, synthetic material. You know? So it is not uh, the fire approval, all these things. So that's why uh, this is uh, using teak wood. So basically, this uh, whole idea uh, comes from Hampi, Hampi Jari. Just I got this call letter, uh, one year Vipar just visit in Hampi areas, uh, all this temple, Vital temple, uh, uh, Lotus Mahal, uh, Elephant Stable, all these uh, areas. So, uska jo architecture, uh, more inspire the Indianness. So, यहाँ पे मैंने वो जो एक Indianness का एक जो होता है ना एक typical. So, हम पे is a rich art and culture. So, just I try something and ये जो window है ये actually inspire from Birupaksha temple. So top to bottom, you can see the every steps, the small, small windows, you know. So just inspire this thing. Uh, whole uh, thing is in focused in Hampi. Yeah. Thank 
Uh, I want to take a word that is mentioned typically Indian, and I think when you go to Hampi, you re realize that the typically Islamic is also part of our Indian ethos, and it is the, if you look at the Lotus Mahal, it is not what people want to look at it as a Hindu architecture. It is more of this beautiful coming together of the Islamic and the Indian architecture together. And this is what, like how we have this fantastic tali where you can bring in a lot of different flavors and rasas into one. Uh, I think Indian art is the most cosmopolitan thing that we could think across where it draws from many cultures. And I think uh, Hampi does it very well. And it is, I think, the most uh, amazing space that we have as inspiration for architecture and landscape. I just want to ask you a very short question. Uh, do you like uh, the, the uh, audiences or the people coming to the airport to touch your work? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, somebody, uh, some passenger are saying, you can see there is um, some uh, set, you know, Bahubali set. So it is कहीं ना कहीं तो वो इंडिया को कनेक्ट कर रहे हैं, you know तो हमारा जो आर्ट एंड कल्चर है तो उसमें हम कुछ भी कितना भी हम डिफरेंस करें उसमें अपना पंत एक होता है ना, so like this. The others do you what do you think that art people can touch it or is there don't touch me not don't see from far. I feel being at a glass people are a bit afraid touching that so it's good for me. So but yeah, uh, uh, I, glass is, is looked as a fragile material, but nowadays it's, it's a very strong material. I, I don't think that's an issue, okay. people touching it. And uh, I'm glad it's, it's an island kind of a thing, so people normally go around and see and uh, try to pursue it. Uh, yeah. Same question. <laughs> I, I know, I wanted, I, I, I kind of wanted people to feel it more than, you know, even the scale and the, the positioning and the idea of this whole script was more of a feeling than touching. So. Yeah. It's of course same, but I just wanted to add this incident. When I started this practice of site-specific work, uh, I'm doing interventions at the public spaces and those works are like, it's not work. They, they are, you know, they're, you're extracting something from the public and you're putting back into it and that is all there. So uh, dogs are, uh, for, for the work is becoming a shelter for the dogs or they are, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's taking, uh, you know, in a different way. So it's no more work work and uh, kind of uh, look at me kind. It's more of their own thing you can touch, you can do whatever. It also has a potential as a maquette, it can become a very big sculpture and people can move around it. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Next. I think uh, all people are part of your work. Yeah, I have no option. <laughs> I have buggy stopping on my work, so I can't say anything. You know, since this is a uh, thing of material and you raised a question um, and being the, the person who was curating everything, this was a question that came often from the operation teams because they wanted to put a barricade or a queue manager around every work and I said, no, it's not going to happen. It's in a public space because you don't want to intimidate people. You want people to go right up to it. So when you said that airport said, ek dam permanent material mein banao, well, that was a uh, that was a desirable factor, but not a mandatory factor. Otherwise, we wouldn't have had puppets coming in, or you know, uh, Siddharth's work was in glass. Everybody at the airport who had to manage it freaked. Glass as an air artwork, I said it will work. And you know, why are you putting it at a level where they can touch? I said it has to be touched. So I think they had a liberty to explore and work in the material that they wanted, and. Uh, you know, uh, just to add what Teja's work is about bricks, the entire, for those of you who have traveled, the airport's uh, core, uh, you know, design language is bricks and glass and bamboo. And when we saw Teja's work, which was, she had of course come with a different proposal, it got changed around to a different thing. We said the, the material, the play of material, where you see brick as an architectural material, 
but here is an artist who is using it in a very different language and making it do different things and you know that that's the thing i think they all have been very kind in saying that they didn't have challenges poor mayadhar had to change his entire way technique because mdf uh, it lends itself to laser cutting and the proposal that he had given was laser cutting and i was completely clueless about you know this was in the initial days where security would come or safety would come and say that this is a unstable material so that was a learning curve for us and i said maya dar you ye to nahi hoga ab dusra socho and he was like par theek mein main ye nahi kar sakta isme ye nahi kar sakta i said socho and you know that is a very interesting uh, i mean of course he resolved the issue and he came up with mdf and you know did the whole uh, way of working differently that changed not only the material and his technique but also the form what you see is just one image but he actually that made it into like a screen five panels people can go around it so the change of material brought in a change not only in terms of the technicality of how do you execute it but how do you think the form all together and for the floor inlay again i i i never realized artists would be so kind and gentle and not tell you the hard ugly truth but there was such a lot of struggle to translate them into the material like we began with granite because again the maintenance team said oh granite is sturdy buggies have to go cranes have to go but the translation of granite into this kind of intricate design just wouldn't work we had three trials done and then of course exploring and then figuring out what how do you cut it these are people who are working with extremely their artwork is not defined by their concept but how the material behaves and what are the techniques and possibilities of it and at sometimes we let go of the thing permanence as if nothing is permanent come on let's deal with it i think uh, thanks for this perspective of the patron and i think uh, there are no more questions for y'all but i'll open it out to the audience with this, a little this more can, time you know uh, we have to have conversations i think that makes it more interesting none of these guys were like but why are you making us sit and you know have panel discussions i said no that's part of the process so let's go through it and i'm sure none of them knew me so that's also safe but that that's <laughs> the fun right i mean yeah. let's let's figure out how we go along yeah yeah yeah, yeah okay. i mean and uh, i'm sure that next time you want to go to the airport i think you should go a little early and look at what is happening there or what has happened there and it would give you a lot of joy in trying to know what is what are the efforts of all these artists who are here are put into making uh, bial a uh, more fascinating place rather than just a boring airport which you generally see and uh, i have no more questions but if the audience has any questions most welcome to ask no i think, I think we can move on to the next session. okay thank Sorry. you very much uh, uh, that's made my life easy thank you everybody